What's going on, losers? So, it's another day out here in Arizona. Beautiful day. We're actually going to head to my parents and ride their bikes. But first, we gotta do some work on the hard body. So, I've been doing, I've been doing a little bit of stuff, trying to get it ready for uh, the dyno. We, this gimbal, the setting on it is like goofy and it turns all weird. Anyways, um, <clears throat> we have a date with the dyno coming up. Will, I don't know if you guys have met Will. Anyways, regardless, Will is the one that's tuning it. He has a shop, LSR Performance, I'm pretty sure. I'm dyslexic, so it's hard for me to remember the order of all these letters and numbers and stuff. Anyways, so we're trying to get the truck ready. We have a few small things. We also have our list over here. We're gonna go over our list and talk about that, what is left and what needs to be done. Um, but yeah, Will came over. He messed with the tune a little bit. The truck runs a lot better. It's still crazy rich, but it runs a lot better. Um, we have spark plugs for him. That way when he's tuned, he can swap park plugs if he needs to. Um, we fixed some intercooler piping. We have a couple leaks to fix. Uh, and that's really about it for the dyno. We just gotta wait for him to get back. He went on a trip for two weeks. So once he's back, hopefully I'll be finished and then we can give the truck to him and he can start dyno tuning it and getting it all finished. So let's get started. Let's look at that list and I'll tell you guys what's going on with that. So here's our list. We've got our rear suspension done. Uh, our coolant leak and oil leak, we don't have done. This actually isn't an oil leak. It's a power steering leak. Uh, we got the ECU installed. We rewired the truck. Uh, paint tuned. We got lifters done. And power steering will get done with the oil leak. I was gonna do electric power steering, but I think we're just gonna keep the pump that's on there and make it better. But this is where we're at. So if we can get these two done, then we can go get tuned. Um, interior's a long way to come, paint's a long way to come, but fixing wheels will probably come after the tune. So really, all we gotta do is these two. And there's a fuel leak, which is new, but uh, the oil leak, we got to get the power steering and to fix the coolant leak, we got to fix the oil leak. So we won't be doing either one of those today. Today, I want to talk about that. <clears throat> and then we're going to fix a fuel leak. So if we come back here and we look, this fitting right here is leaking fuel. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the return line off over there. We're going to put a gas can back here. We're going to throw the pump on, have it pump all the fuel out of the tank. Then we'll pull the sender out. We'll get to that corner. And uh, I got some sealant and some crescent wrenches there to tighten that thing up. And hopefully that solves the problem. We'll probably do this one too. And then we may do those two up there. But that's where we're at. So that's what we're doing today, fixing this fuel leak and getting one step closer to the dyno. I'm quite excited. Um, I wish, I don't know if we'll have like enough room in the boost to do what I wanna do. What I would really like is like a 300 wheel horsepower tune, a 400 and a 500. Um, five being like max effort on ethanol and then 400 being like I don't know, 25-ish pounds of boost on pump gas. And then we have like 20 pounds of boost on pump gas for 300 or whatever that boost number would be. Um, but I don't know if we'll be able to do that. We got to talk to Will once he gets a hold of this ECU. I know the ECU can do it. I just don't know if we want to really actually spend the money or just set the truck at 400 and call it good. So we're going to do our best to make 500 
there's really no reason we shouldn't, except for we don't have enough fuel. But uh, <clears throat> we're gonna do our best to make 500, but the truck will probably never see that tune. I don't see a reason for the truck to make 500 horsepower. If it makes 400, it's gonna be rowdy enough for me. So we'll go to 500, we'll bring it down to four, and uh, that's probably where it'll live its entire life. But anyways, let's get started. All right. So here's what I did. This was touching before. So I remade this intercooler pipe. That way it doesn't touch. Carissa's got to come out and we got to bead roll this side. And that will be finished. We also got to get an air filter because we don't want when we're drifting to suck up any rocks or anything that come off the tires. So we got to do that for the engine bay. Um, but other than that, everything's good. That's on, valve cover's all done. Um, yeah, everything's pretty good. Like I said, the power steering pump does leak. We got to look at getting a new power steering pump. And I really want to redesign this reservoir setup. It would be nice if we could get like a smaller one that can maybe go back here or something and drain down to it. It just, there isn't a whole lot of drain down here if that makes sense. But if we could go back there against the firewall, maybe that would help. What's up, Levi? What are you doing? Playing. Doesn't look like it. it looks like you're hanging out in the shop. All right, so anyways, let me go get a gas can and we're gonna start on that fuel leak. All right, I got the return line off. Levi's in the truck, so we're gonna put him to work. Flip that second switch down there, buddy. This one? Nope, this second one. Yep. Yeah. Push the top in. There you go. Nope, stay in there, stay in there. Now double tap the screen. Yep, at the top. Okay, now go to the bottom right, the purple square. You might have to double tap it, buddy. Hit it again. You didn't double tap. There you go. What does that say? Okay, nope, hit the red X. Uh, what does that say? Dashboard. Let me see. All right. So we had the pump on. We pumped everything into here. Now we're going to pull out the cinder. Um, then we'll pull out all the foam. We'll see what the condition of that is because it only has like a three-year life. Hey, hey, be a little bit quiet, okay? So it only has like a three-year life, so we'll have to check that out, see what the foam looks like, and then we'll get to these guys. <laughs> So this is uh, like a JEGS fuel cell. And there was a company in Texas that made this. I forgot what their name was. I'll have to try to find it and put it in the video. But uh, the only other like system like this that I could find was from Aeromotive and it was like $400. So we got this one, which was way less. It was like a hundred bucks. So there's that. Now. This foam does a few different things. It acts as a baffle to keep the fuel from fuel, the fuel, the fuel, the fuel from sloshing around everywhere. And also, if you puncture your tank, this prevents it from just like running out like crazy. This stuff actually feels like it's in really good shape. Like it's not degraded at all. If I pull on it and try to rip it, I can rip it. But as far as itself, it seems really good. 
That's, a, that's all the foam that we cram into this little box. Um, it's a lot. It's still saturated with gas, and that kind of proves what it does there. It just holds the fuel in place. So if you puncture this, the, whole, the fuel doesn't rush out. Um, and like, like I said, it doesn't allow it to slosh. It kind of holds it in place. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and get this fuel can out of here, and we're going to take apart that corner and start trying to get that thing to seal up. So, taking both these out, we're going to seal them both up. Uh, they're different, as you can tell. One has a little nut, one has a big nut. It's kind of funny. They're both tens. One came with the tank and one didn't. Um, originally, the way I was going to set this up was two external pumps to flow enough to uh, make enough because I couldn't find a hanger. But then I found this hanger, so we put in a 450 and called it a day. This is the stuff we're using to seal it. I'll link it down in the description if you guys need some of it. Um, I've used this stuff before, and it seems really runny, which is weird to me. Hopefully this isn't as runny. This is a little bit thicker. But we're just going to put it on here. Yeah, see how runny that is? We buying Ray Ray. Push it. So this isn't an RTV, this stays liquid. So we're gonna do it like that. And then we'll put it on here, facing in. And then we'll do this one. This one. Put him on. We'll take this washer. Put him on. Boom. Okay. So there, that should be better. All right, so that's the fuel leak, all fixed, um, we hope. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll find out. Um, but yeah, there it is, it's all hooked back up. Those are sealed, this is sealed. Um, this is a little bit loose, which isn't great, so we may have to fix that in the future, but should be should be okay for now. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I know it wasn't a whole lot going on in the video. Oh, actually, no, that's not true. We got one more thing to do. We got one more thing to do. Recording me? Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> um, anyways, so now what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and put a bead on this. This is my bead roller. We got this from Paul, the guy that does the welding on the intake elbows. So he welds them up, we do this, and then we send them out to you guys. So, anyways, Carissa is going to have to set the camera on something. There's a tub over there. You could move. And then uh, she's going to have to come steer while I. Okay, I lied. She's going to turn. I'm going to steer. Whatever you want. Okay, that way. All right, go ahead.
looks like what the mouse is going to be. This is a straight piece of pipe. So unlike the elbows, it's not as high. That's good. The elbows are really thick on one side. Because when you do this, when you, when you bend this pipe, it stretches here and compresses here. So there's more metal here than here. So when you try to roll on the edge here, this is really thick. So you have to have that real tight. Um, but because this was straight, we didn't. And there you go. Nice little bead roll. All done. Little O-ring on there. Uh, I want to oil it up a little. You shouldn't use PB Blaster because it's PB Blaster. There was a jug of 1540 around here somewhere. What did I do with it? Get you a little oil. It's if you're running these style of connectors. Put it on here. Of what? Um, helps protect the O-ring to keep it from cracking. And it's going to make it easier for us to put this thing together. That's the, the number one thing. Make it easy. Slips into here. Now that it's been rolled, we gotta open this up more. Ugh. Look at that magic trick. You can hear me? Mm -hmm. So, we got the intercooler pipe in. It's all done, doesn't touch. Everything's good there. So, that's, that's really it for this video. We're all done. Um, the next video we do on this, hopefully we'll be putting in a power steering pump and getting a radiator overflow set up, whether we use a bottle or buy a, a thing. I just don't know where to put it. We're also going to be getting rid of this thermostat here. So there's a little bit left to do. And then it's dyno time. So this was kind of like dyno prep part one. Um, I did this off camera, but we bead rolled it. We fixed the fuel leak. Now we just got to do the power steering coolant leak. And we'll get rid of this thermostat. So yeah, it's getting there. We're close. We're almost ready for the dyno. Um, hopefully, like I said, as soon as Will gets back, this will all be ready to go. Um, cause like worst case scenario, we can just take off the belt. That way the power steering pump doesn't leak and that'll solve that problem. We can just put in an overflow and we'll be all done. Here's my kids driving me nuts. Let me see that. Can you wave to the camera? Levi, back up. He's the wheeze, dude. All right. All right. Anyways, so that's it. We're out of here. We'll see you guys in the next one. And hopefully this will be ready to go to the dyno by then.